So first of all, if you haven't seen part one of this video, I highly recommend you go check out part one. I'll put a card in the corner, link in the description. Um, that video is gonna go over how to prep the surface and basically how to get it ready for paint. Um, with that said, as you can see between parts one and two, you know, I've got everything all masked off. I sort of made, you know, like a quasi paint booth, if you will, underneath this car. So I can spray everything and not, you know, get a ton of overspray everywhere. So before we dive in and I show you what paint I'm going to use, you and I need to have a little discussion. Um, I've already seen it and it's already happened. I've already got people telling me I should be using this paint instead of this paint or this paint instead of this paint. At the end of the day, I will show you guys what paint I'm going to use. I will show you why I'm going to use this paint. If you want to use something different other than what I'm showing you, fantastic. Um, if you want to take your car apart and use KBS, be my guest. If you want to take your car apart and use Rust-Oleum out of rattle can, be my guest. If that's what you use and you get good results with it, fantastic. Just because I'm using something different other than what you're going to use, doesn't make either one of us wrong. If we both get good results out of the product, two different products, great. Then we both had success. So at the end of the day, what's the big deal? Um, with that said, I'm gonna show you the paint we're gonna use. So the products that I'm using here are all from Master Coat. The reason I found out about these products is I actually had a suggestion from a viewer saying, hey, this stuff is fantastic. You need to look into it. And I've had really great results with it. And when you guys suggest stuff like that, I 100%, I will look into it. I'm not saying I'm gonna go out and use every single product that you guys suggest, but if I'm impressed by what I see, I will use it. So with that said, what is this stuff? So this over here on the left, this is their permanent rust sealer. Um, this stuff has a high amount of aluminum in it, and this is actually, believe it or not, bridge primer. Um, this stuff has, is used on bridges and it holds up extremely well to salt and sort of, you know, bad environments. Um, they rate this stuff to do 20 years on a bridge. So if it'll do 20 years on a bridge, I'm pretty sure it'll last a long time on my car that sees summer rain five times a year. So you put three coats of this down, you follow that with their top coat. This top coat is called AG111. AG stands for anti-graffiti. So this stuff is used by the New York subway system on their subway trains. It is an anti-graffiti coating like I said. What gives it the ability to be an anti-graffiti coating is you could submerge this top coat in acetone for 90 days and it won't dissolve. So if you spray the outside of a rail car you can put some acetone on a rag, it'll wipe off the spray paint, but it won't take this stuff off. Um, this is the top coat for the primer. Now the top coat is available in multiple colors. It's also available in a clear. So for example, if you wanted a hot pink chassis, what you could do is you do three coats of the primer, you would spray your hot pink base coat, and then you would apply a clear version of AG111. As you can see, this is actually a two-part system. So this is part B, you pour part B into part A, mix it up, and then at that point, you're ready to spray, um, you know, paint it with a brush, roller, whatever. Finally, over here on the right is their inner panel protector. So I'm gonna be using this on the inner panels, all the inner seams and things like that. You actually have to thin this out with some sort of um, mineral spirits to be able to get it to spray. It's, it's so thick that, you know, you really want it to flow and sort of creep out. So I'm gonna thin this out with some mineral spirits and when we get to that part of the video, I'll let you know how much. So with that, we're gonna start mixing up the primer, get it sprayed and uh, ultimately get this chassis painted. So I forgot to mention this, but Master Coat also offers their own thinner. Um, they're very adamant about the fact that if you're going to thin the AG111, you have to use this thinner that they offer. Don't use anybody else's thinner. Um, the rust seal is compatible with other thinners, but being that I have this much, I just use you know the Master Coat thinner. You can thin 
the AG111 or the rust sealer up to 10%. So what I did was I just used like a couple capfuls. So I'll put, I put two capfuls in this. I put, you know, probably a capful in this and then went about using it that way. So you can thin it up to 10%, but that's their thinner. That's how they want you to use it. And they're real clear. Only thin AG111 with their thinner. Now, about this paint that I'm using, this is a moisture cured urethane paint. So what that means is if there's any moisture in the air or on the metal or substrate that you're trying to paint, that is what cures this paint. Therefore, if, there, if the humidity that day that you're trying to paint is very high or it's raining outside or something like that, there's a lot of moisture in the air. The paint is going to cure extremely quickly. So you want to paint this stuff on a day that is low humidity, no precipitation. And that way you have plenty of time to work with the paint and with the product and put multiple, multiple thin coats down. As you'll see as I'm stirring this product up, I'm not just stirring it traditionally like in a circle. I'm kind of pulling it up from the bottom and, and mixing it that way. Because, like I said, you don't want to you want to keep as much moisture out of the paint as you can when you're mixing it to try and keep it from hardening up. Also, if you notice, as I pull stuff up from the bottom, you will see a bunch of aluminum that you know I've got to get resuspended back into the paint. Um, Master Coat also sells an extreme version of this primer that has much more aluminum and it's much thicker. So if you have pinholes in like a fender or a roof or something, you know, non-structural, you know, not a frame, you could put that stuff on those pinholes. It'll fill the pinholes and then you could Bondo, primer, do whatever right over top of that paint. All right, spoiler, you're looking at the finished product, but there's something here I got to show you. I got this trick from an old timer and it works fantastic. So if you guys are ever going to paint anything with any sort of threads in it, don't use tape, use grease, check this out. So I just put some grease in the threads of this transmission mount. And there you go. So now I can thread my bolt in. The bolt isn't gonna care that there's grease in the threads and there's no paint in the threads. Everything's gonna work like it's supposed to work. So all I did was I just took a grease gun, stuck the end of the grease gun in the end of the threads, put you know one or two pumps of grease in it, in all the threaded holes in this transmission mount. So I also did it on any other threaded holes that I needed to use on the undercarriage. If you put paint right into those threads, guys, you're gonna have to run a tap through it because there's no way that that bolt's gonna run through that paint. Um, the resin in this bridge primer that I'm using is no joke. Um, without giving too much away, it's used in glue. And so guys, you could use tape or anything like that. Grease is just a lot quicker, a lot easier. And at the end of the day, what's it matter if there's a little bit of grease still in the threads? So as far as actually spraying the product, guys, what I have here is I have just a cheap siphon feed spray gun. I think it has like a 1.8 millimeter tip in it. I set my static air pressure over on the wall at 25 pounds. I don't have a regulator on the gun, so I couldn't tell you what it was when I was actually spraying but at any rate, it came out fantastic. Um, the paint itself, I did not thin it, and I had a very controlled spray, very minimal overspray. I was extremely happy with the way that this paint sprayed right out of the can. Now, as this sort of progressed and I got to you know my third coat, a few hours had went by and the, the product that I still had in the can was getting a little thick. So what I did was I took just a cap full of the thinner that you know this kit came with, dumped the cap full of thinner in with the paint, stirred it up, and continued spraying, and it worked fantastic. Um, I will show you guys the results of this, but by far, if I had the choice of spraying it or brushing it, 100%, you're gonna get better results visually by spraying it. So take a look here, guys. This is what we got. This is after three coats of the rust sealer. Now there's, Honestly, there's really no reason I probably couldn't just leave it this way finish-wise because it does look really, really good. Um, as far as a top coat, 
you could, at this point, you could put the AG111 on top of it. And again, that comes in pretty much any color you want because it also comes in clear. So what I could do if I wanted, you know, any color at this point, I would spray my base of whatever color that I wanted. And then I could go ahead and put the clear AG111 over top of it. So this is where we're at guys. At this point, I've used pretty much a full quart of the rust sealer. And unfortunately, I still have some other parts over here that I need to coat. You know, I got some miscellaneous brackets, a fuel tank, the rear axle, and some more brackets over here. But unfortunately, I got to order some more uh, rust sealer. So it's going to be a little bit of time before I can uh, get this stuff finished. With that, um, I'm actually going to do Raptor liner on the bottom of this car. So I'm going to shoot a separate video on how to shoot the Raptor liner, but I'll bring you guys back when I use the uh, AG111 on the axle, the fuel tank, and some of these you know, miscellaneous brackets you see back here. So after I got some more rust sealer in my hands, I uh, went ahead and you know, started brushing you know, the rear bumper support, rear axle, the fuel tank, and some of these miscellaneous parts that you see in front of you. The biggest suggestion I can give you guys if you're gonna brush it rather than spray it is make sure you thin it. Um, if, if you brush it and you don't thin it, you will see brush strokes. If you thin it, it lays much flatter. It gives a much better appearance. So keep that in mind if you're gonna brush it rather than spray it. The other thing you gotta remember with brushing versus spraying is you'll see when I do the rear axle, it gets very tedious, you know, trying to get all these little nooks and crannies and all these little spaces with a brush. Whereas if I, you know, sprayed it, I could just spray it and I would be done. But as you can see, I really didn't want to mask off the rest of my shop. I didn't want to do this outside because of rain. So brushing it for me was the best option. Okay, so it's been a couple hours. I'm done with the rust sealer. Make sure you use some saran wrap on the lid. You know, put some saran wrap between the lid and the can, otherwise you'll never get the lid back off if you ever want to use it in the future. Um, now we're going to move on to the AG111. So this is a two-part paint. So you're gonna mix up part A, and then take part B, pour it into part A, and then continue mixing part A. Once you mix this, you have four to six hours to use it before it completely hardens up. So you have to keep that in mind. You have to have everything prepped, everything ready to go, and once you mix these two, clock is running. So with that in mind, we're at that point where we're ready to do it. So. Pull the lid, get this stuff mixed up, get it uh, brushed on. Now, as far as applying the AG111, you want to do it when the silver rust sealer starts to tack up. Um, that's the way I did it. When it starts getting fairly tacky after a couple hours of it drying, that's when you're going to go ahead and apply your top coat. Now, as far as AG111, you're really only going to use one coat. That's all you need to do. Um, if you watch this time lapse, I actually do two coats because I had some left over and if I didn't use it, it was going to harden up. So I put two coats on, but three coats of the rust sealer, the silver primer, one coat of the AG111 top coat will do 14,000 hours in an ASTM B117 salt spray test. In that exact same B117 salt spray test, pour 15 right on their website they say it will do 1,000 hours. So for any of you guys that are saying, why aren't you using pour 15? That's kind of why. The AG111 is also completely UV resistant with no top coat required. So one thing I can tell you guys about the AG111 versus the silver rust sealer is it's a little bit thicker. So if you're gonna spray it or brush it, Either way, you're going to have to thin it more than what you're going to have to thin the silver rust sealer. Um, I used twice the amount, so two catfuls when I uh, brushed it on. And I still have some brush marks showing. It's not the end of the world. Um, but unfortunately, I have no way of knowing, you know, are those brush strokes from the silver or are they from the top coat? In hindsight, I probably would have sprayed it. But as you can see, you know, the environment that I'm working in, I would have to do a lot of masking to uh, to not get overspray on everything. You know, like I said earlier, my other option is do it outside 
but then, you know, you're kind of rolling the dice with the weather. Is the weather going to hold out, you know, basically for an entire day to get this done? So the last thing we're going to talk about is how to treat an internal surface. All those seams, inner frame rails, rocker panels, places like that, that you can't directly spray paint normally. So there's a couple different ways you can go about doing this. If you want to spray paint, my suggestion is this. You need to get one of these guns. This is an engine cleaning gun. What this is, you hook it up to compressed air, take the other end, stick it in you know, the bottle of whatever. It could be the phosphoric acid to do the phosphoric acid treat. It could be your thinned out paint, pull the trigger and it will spray whatever you have, you know, obviously the hose in. Now, if you wanna paint, what you need to do is you need to follow the same steps that we went over earlier in the first video. So you have to do the phosphoric acid treatment, you're gonna spray that with the engine cleaning gun. Let that sit, let that dry overnight. Then you're gonna go back and then you could spray paint on top of that. So you could spray the, the rust inhibiting silver paint, the AG111. You can spray all that stuff through this gun and you just put the tip up through all the holes, pull the trigger and spray. You're gonna to have to thin it considerably to get this gun to spray it. That's the so your other option besides paint is going to be cavity paste or lanolin. This is the option that I went. So if you're going to do the cavity paste or the lanolin option, you have to have the whole chassis painted, the whole chassis has to be dry, and then you're going to go at, back after the fact and treat all the internal surfaces after the paint is dry. So this is Master Coat's inner panel protector. If you guys look, it's about the consistency of like frosting on a cake. Um, it's kind of, it's very thick, but from what I've seen and read, it works extremely well. Um, I'll be honest with you guys, I didn't use it. And let me take you over to the car and I'll kind of explain why. I could 100% get that nozzle in this hole, spray up inside this cavity, but the main problem with that product is it's so thick, it doesn't creep. What I'm saying is if I spray this stuff inside this cavity, and let's say I only cover 50% of this cavity, the product isn't gonna move on its own and try to you know, cover any other areas that I couldn't directly spray. What I ended up using, it's gonna come to no surprise to a bunch of you, is lanolin. Because lanolin, when I spray it in this hole, and if I only spray half of this area, it will creep out and get up into this seam, into this seam, into this seam. It will migrate and move on its own. So if I don't get 100% coverage on my initial spray of lanolin, it will move on its own. The corrosion inhibiting paste won't do that. I actually tested it. What I did was I just sprayed a cardboard box real quick, waited 24 hours and came back to it the inhibiting paste hadn't moved an inch. The lanolin had crept nearly three inches in a 24 hour span on a cardboard box. I understand this isn't a cardboard box, but the same principle still applies. So I applied lanolin inside all these cavities, all this stuff that you see up here, all has lanolin in it. You know, down, down into these frame rails and stuff, this is all covered in lanolin. So it will penetrate this seam, get in between here, keep rust from occurring in those seams. And really that's what you want. So yes, there is a time and place for this stuff. Where I would use this, if I had the car on a rotisserie, 100% I would use this because if you have a car on a rotisserie, you can literally just turn the car sideways and you could just pour that stuff right in those frame rails, verify that it leaked out the bottom of all those seams that I was showing you and then you could flip the car the other direction and do the exact same thing. So you could verify coverage on both seams. Being that the car's up on a lift, I can't do any of that stuff. The product doesn't creep, the product doesn't move. So I have to use something that I know is gonna creep and migrate and get into all those places that I cannot directly spray. So guys, a few days went by, I got everything bolted back in underneath the car. There's still a few things I need to put in, like the exhaust and things like that, but the majority of the major components are here. So this is what it looks like, guys. Now the top coat, 
that I went over top of the bridge primer. I didn't record it in this video. It's actually gonna be my next upload. It is Raptor Liner. So I'm gonna show you guys how to mix Raptor Liner, how to tint Raptor Liner, and ultimately how to spray Raptor Liner. That's the next video. Um, as far as the, the details on the Raptor Liner, it's actually color matched to the outside of the car. I went and got the same paint that they use on the outside of the car, mixed it in with the Raptor Liner, tinted it, and sprayed it. So it looks fantastic. The match is pretty close. It's not exact. I wish it was a little bit better, but you know what? At the end of the day, it's the bottom of a car. So nobody's really gonna see it anyway other than me. Um, as far as some of the other stuff you see here, Believe it or not guys, a lot of these parts are not new. So yes, the diff cover is new. I had this sitting in my basement for five years and I couldn't just bring, I couldn't bring myself to bolt a brand new diff cover onto a rusted axle. So this is new. Um, I did a slight brake upgrade from Ford Racing on this car. So it has the 11 and a half inch Cobra rear brakes on it now. Again, that was stuff I had sitting in my basement and I just couldn't bring myself to put that stuff on. Um, but as far as like the rest of the suspension components and stuff, it's all the exact same stuff. I just cleaned it. So bucket of water and a rag and a little bit of elbow grease and it cleaned up fantastic. All the stuff is, like I said, the exact same stuff that was in here three weeks ago. It's just cleaner now. Guys, the actual procedure that I showed you in these two videos, you could apply this to any sort of rusted metal that you want to paint. It, it could be a fence post, a trailer, it could be anything. It could be a mower deck. It doesn't matter. The procedure for prepping it, treating the rust, and painting it is going to be exactly the same no matter what you're painting. So the fact that I painted a bottom, the bottom of a car is sort of irrelevant because the procedure could be used on anything. So I hope you guys got something out of this. Um, as always, guys, I'll have links down in the description to all the you know tools, supplies, all that stuff that I use in this video if you're interested in any of the products that I used here. As always guys, if you guys like the video, hit like. You wanna see more content, go down and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching guys.